People are predicting that 2021 is going to be the big housing crash or the zombie apocalypse. I don't know which, but I got five years of food. I've got guns and ammo to last a lifetime. Are you prepared? I think the more important question is, is it even gonna happen? One, 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 one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. I'm turning dreams into reality, yeah. It's one, all one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. It has been a weird year for sure, and as a result, people wanna know, what does this mean for next year? Look at the crazy trends we're seeing in real estate, and the big fear is that we're building a bubble. Prices are going up, and how long can we really sustain this? This has led to this fear of a housing crash in 2021, and many of you have reached out to me and you wanna know, Chris, you've done a billion dollars of real estate. Do you think there's gonna be a housing crash? They say hindsight is 2020 because everyone wishes that they knew what was gonna happen, like having a private crystal ball. Uh, what do we have here? Today, at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you what I believe is going to happen to real estate in the next 12 months and also the next five years. But for you to really understand that, we have to take a closer look at the housing market of 2020. We've had a huge shift between demand and supply. There's more people wanting real estate than ever before, but guess what? there's not enough real estate. And this has happened for two main reasons. The first one is that the pandemic has induced this massive urbanization. Social distancing is being taken to an extreme. They're like, well fine, if I can't get within six feet of you, then I'm gonna get like 60 miles from you. So we got people moving out of the cities. On top of that, interest rates have dropped to a 50 year low of 2.94%. Thank you, Fed, for dropping those rates. This is almost what you might call free money in the game of real estate. And check this out. You can hold on to real estate for a long period of time and secure super low all-time interest rates. These two things have driven this super high demand that we're experiencing in the real estate market this year. But how much did those two things really impact real estate? Well, from Fortune Magazine, they said, so far this year, signed contracts are running 27.5% above the level of 2019. And May through August, new contracts exceeded 2019 by over 50%. This is crazy town, and that's why people are so afraid. If prices keep going up and if demand goes up and we keep needing more real estate, people are wondering, we're building this bubble, right? Is it ever gonna burst? And when it does, there's gonna be blood in the streets. Will it be yours? Will there be a bubble? Fortune Magazine went on to say, these increases are unsustainable, but prices will keep rising in double digits for another six months to a year. Ed Pinto said that. He's the director of American Enterprise Institute at the Housing Center. This dude has a lot of financial information and he's basically putting his neck on the line and he's saying, we're gonna see these rises increase for six to 12 months. Why? You know, I used to believe that economics were for economists. It was too hard to really grasp. I've learned in the game of real estate that you can understand this. Check this out. We have a problem with supply. It's short right now for three reasons. Number one, more people that already live in urban developments, they don't wanna sell. They already are where people are trying to get to. Another reason why we have a shortage of homes is because builders simply can't keep up. Understand before we entered this pandemic, we already were a million houses down, meaning we're still behind from 2008. And then on top of that, don't forget the forbearances. The government has basically said, pausing all foreclosures. We want a moratorium. I don't want any banks foreclosing on any American that can't pay their mortgage because of the crazy policies that have been enacted during this period of time. And so everyone's wondering, is that one going to build all of this pressure? Think about this for a moment. If there's anything that genuinely has me worried, it's actually the forbearances. What is a forbearance? It's a temporary postponement of mortgage payments. It's a form of payment relief granted by the lender or creditor in lieu of forcing a property into foreclosure. In other words, the government forced this. They said, we don't want any American to experience foreclosures. But you know what, at some point, life has to get back to normal. And as it does, and the forbearance program is gone, guess what people are gonna be forced to do? They're gonna have to start paying their mortgages again. But if they've lost their job, if they don't have gainful employment again, I mean, look at how many jobs were lost. That means that we might be building up this bubble of people that once you say, okay, it's green light on making your payment again, if a whole bunch of people can't, 
guess what's gonna happen? A whole bunch of mortgages, a whole bunch of property is going back to the bank and that's gonna be a bursting of a bubble. You know the real truth about why people are afraid there's gonna be a big housing bubble crisis? It's because they remember 12 years ago. In 2008, that great recession, we had a very different set of circumstances. We had lenders that were basically giving mortgages away for free. Uh, we called them heartbeat loans. If you have a heartbeat, we'll give you a loan. Or if you can fog the mirror, we'll give you a loan. They were basically lending money to everybody. And you know what? It caught up and it turned into something really bad. Is that really what's happening right here? Actually, it's not. We don't have enough real estate as it is, but on top of that, Realtor.com does a good job explaining this. They say, why will things be different than 2008? Because bad mortgages, rampant home flipping, and speculation, and overbuilding all contributed to the last financial meltdown. This time around, the much stronger housing market isn't the driver of the crisis. It's one of the pandemic's many victims. In other words, this crazy government-forced recession is what is driving the problem that we're having right now. Do you really want to know when the bubble's going to pop? Do you really want to know what's going to happen to the real estate that you own? Tell me! I'm going to share that in just a couple minutes. First, check this out. Some people think it's when people will sell back their urban homes. Dude, I got news for you. When this pandemic is over, it's not like people are going to uproot and move back to the cities overnight. This is a process. It's going to have consequence for some time. Then they might be thinking, well, maybe it's when the builders actually start catching up on the real estate. My friend, that is years and years and years away, not six to 12 months. Remember how far behind we are. But then you might be thinking, Chris, is it when there's no more forbearances on foreclosures? If any of these three are going to have an impact that could trigger a bubble bursting, it's definitely going to be the government changing its position on forbearances because that could trigger a lot more default in the game of real estate. Check out these rates. Did you know that overall delinquency rates, people that have mortgages, how many of them go back to the bank? It's currently 6.6%. Did you know before that it was like 6.5 something? Since July of 2019, it has only increased 2.8 percentage points. In other words, we've hardly felt it tickle even a little. If you look at Fortune Magazine and ask Mr. Ed Pinto when he thinks the crash is gonna happen, he says it's gonna take six to 12 months for the foreclosures to start arriving in large numbers. And by that period of time, maybe he thinks we'll have addressed some of our supply problem. Personally, I look at this and I'm going to give you Chris Crohn's crystal ball. <laughs> While I don't have a crystal ball, here's what I can tell you. Real estate moves super predictably, not like the stock market. Real estate, it ebbs and flows and it is a product of supply and demand. And I can tell you this, a bubble will not really be built in the game of real estate until everyone that really wants a house has a house. We have to satisfy that first. We're so far from that. We've spent the last 10 years trying to catch up and you know what? We're nowhere close. If you were to ask my opinion on the transparency of what's happening in the market, take a look at my piggy bank. Right now, real estate, it's gonna keep climbing, it's gonna keep moving, and it's not gonna have as much to do with forbearance as it really is going to have to do with us finally building enough houses for the demand that people have. And in my opinion, that is years and years and years away. It could be five years, it could be eight years, it could be 10 years. Do I really think that we're gonna have a bubble burst in 2021? If we do, my friend, it's gonna be small, it's gonna be short-lived, it's gonna be because of the forbearances, but for the most part, real estate is gonna bounce back and it's gonna keep trucking in the direction that it has to. This is why real estate markets usually take 15 to 20 years between cycles, because what ends up happening after 2008, we don't build for five to eight years. And what happens is we populate and our numbers increase and then we have more of a demand for real estate. But guess what? Eventually, we're supposed to catch up and be able to build enough houses. The prices go up, people become eager, they build more than we need, and then of course that sets us up for a popping of the next bubble. Friends, we're nowhere near that cycle happening right now. According to my crystal ball, the next five to eight years is gonna be one of the juiciest times to be invested in the game of real estate. As long as we have a shortage of supply, you're going to wanna to buy real estate. You're gonna see it continuing to appreciate. It's gonna go up in value. And as that happens, you can take home big winnings. But as long as you know how to buy in the right places and frankly, in the right markets, what you need, my friend, is a game plan.
From day one, I've taught people. My custom game plan made me millions of dollars and anyone that gets a custom million dollar game plan can achieve the exact same thing. If you don't have a game plan on how to capitalize on this really historic, fantastic real estate market, click the link below, get with a member of my team and they will provide you a custom game plan. They'll look at where you're at financially. They'll look at how much money you make. They'll look at whether you have good credit or bad credit and they'll show you step by step what you need to do to own as much of this juicy real estate in the right markets as you possibly can. Because friends, that's how the Rockefellers did it. That's how fortunes are made and you can make it too. Click the link below, request a free custom consultation. That game plan could be a financial lifesaver. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. It's designed to keep you informed so you can make the best financial choices. If you're not a subscriber, fix that. I've got videos coming out every week designed to bring out the financial genius in you. On top of that, if you wanna know what's gonna happen to the real estate market if we get a different president in office, like Biden, check out this video and I'm gonna share with you my top five predictions of how the real estate world is gonna change. Man, I kinda need like a housing bubble popping or financial crisis or else who's gonna eat all this food? I got my peanut butter over here, got my trail mix, I've got my dehydrated breast milk. Yeah, we're set.